This is the sentencing guidelines app for iPad training course. We're using sentencing guidelines for Apple iPad. We will support Android and Kindle and with some Windows devices. So we're joined just with one delegate, uh, Ash, on, on the call today. He's going to ask any questions he, he wants to as we go through the course. Uh, just as soon as it comes up, he can pop in and ask a question uh, without any problem. So we're looking at my iPad, which I'm just um, putting onto screen. I'm just going to bring that full screen so you can see exactly what I'm looking at. OK, so first thing when you start the application, you see uh, what's new. We just give you a list of what's uh, happening with the application, what the latest features or bug fixes are. There's a link there to sign up for our email newsletter and some additional information about subscriptions from June 2013. And there's some videos and tutorial resources as well. So all useful stuff. Displayed at the bottom on the right of the tablet, we've got your device information and app version. Just useful in case we need to check what version you're using. OK, we have on the left hand side the list of indexes within the application. And we're just going to run through those in order, really, from the, the top to the bottom. We've got a list of the offenses. And these are the same as you have inside your magistrate's court sentencing guidelines folder. You've got an index by group, grouped index, an index by A to Z. And we've added onto that an index by page number and also an index by Act of Parliament. So we're all familiar with HMCTS or the, the people preparing the court list coming up with really devious and obtuse descriptions of the offence before us. You can always track it down by the actual Act of Parliament under which that prosecution is brought. So that's a list of um, basically those Acts of Parliament, just useful to have. Just jumping back to A to Z, we, we do have on the right hand side what's called a sort of Rolodex, which means you can jump down to the first letter of the offence, all the way down to zebra pelican crossings or back to A for ABH. And you notice we have a coloured spine. If I go to group, go to the first M, which is magistrate's court, then go into motoring, you can see the, the pink section, which is how motoring's coloured, is obvious within that section. Perhaps a little bit subliminal, but it just helps you recognise you're on the correct offence for that particular description. OK. So what do we do in court? The, the, the way to use this application, uh, if you want to, you can prepare your court listing by going through and selecting the offences that you're expecting to see within this court session. So you can see there's a little star next to the offence. If you miss the star, for instance, exceeding axle weight, you can still make it favourite here within the actual offence itself. So that's, that's looking at the offence guideline, the correct page inside your, your book. And I want to make that favourite. We just put a star against it. OK, so having built up some of these favourites, they now appear with, within my list of favourites that pops up from the bottom. So let's just add a few in there. So let's have a fail to give information. We get plenty of those. Fail to comply with traffic signals. Fail to produce test certificate. I missed again. I'll do it from there. And you can see the last one selected will be upon our list of offences. OK, so I could actually build up the definitive typical motoring favourites for the type of court I normally see. So we'll have a bit of no insurance, we'll have some no test certificates, we'll have 
no operator's license. And I've now got a list of the typical motoring offences I expect to see within my motoring court. So having, having done all that preparation, what I can do is export this to motoring court. And I've now created a set of favorites that I can reuse and re-import at any point in the future. So for example, if, if I'm called into a different court, I could clear all my favorites. I could go back to, um, we'll have a bit of ABH, we'll have a bit of a fray. It's a Friday night punch up, assault by beating. So I've, I've got a completely set, different set of favorites, a couple of breaches. And I can clear those and re-import my set of motoring favorites. So I'm back into that lovely motoring court with that set of new offenses. So that's how we use favorites to help you prep for court and also make it a little bit easier the next time you're doing a similar type of court with similar offenses. Okay, any, any questions, Ash, at that point? Is that fairly, fairly straightforward? No, I'm, I'm with you up to now. Okay, good. Okay, we have um, other indexes inside the application. So this is the enhanced index of explanatory materials within your bench guide. And you could, for instance, make favorites here for maximum fines, multiple offenses, payment, anything you need to pull out and reference. Sorry, that, you how you got back? Sorry, how did you get to the indexing? The enhanced indexing? So explanation material, I just clicked the link on the left hand side. So I've got I've got offenses, the next one down, explanation material. Uh -huh. Yes, yes okay. Okay. And okay. the yeah. same follows having made these favours, you can see they now appear on the explanation material. Okay. And the same is true for additional guidelines. So if you were looking at knife crime and drug offenses, that would appear again within additional guidelines. So each of these tabs is a discrete collection of favorites across the application. So court bench books, if it's adult, family, youth, crown or companion, you can take a favorite from here if you're looking at particular program requirements, and those will appear within your bench books as favorites. You can also, uh, just because we, we don't, we know this is adults, they have appeared under the adult section. If I add a family favorite, that would appear under the family and so on and so forth. So it just separates them out into their particular sections. Pronouncement cards. These are all the different cards we have. Adult, um, Welsh adult, family, youth, and Welsh youth. Uh, I presume, Ash, you're, you're, not, you're not doing Welsh courts these days. No, no. no. Okay. <laughs> I, I am reliably informed they do still run courts in North Wales using uh, in, in Welsh with the Welsh benches. So it does depend on the, the defendant, I guess. So we'll stick with the adults for now. And if you make any favorites here, you can construct a disqualification, a discharge, or maybe a custodial sentence. You can construct these pronouncements in the order you want them. Yes. So within pronouncements, you can then edit these and move them into the order in which you intend to announce a, a pronouncement. So you'd probably right. do yes. cust custodial first, disqualification, you wouldn't do a discharge, that's perhaps something else. But you get the idea, you can structure those using right. pronouncements. 
yeah, you just showing the structure rather than judicially. There was one question about uh, these pronouncement cards. I think it's 39A or something like that, uh, uh, the mode of trial. I don't think that exists in it, and it does exist in our actual books. We can only supply the official PDFs. Now, what I think's happened is they've withdrawn the mode of trial from the pronouncement cards. However, you can visit, um, just just cover this, you, you can actually go to our support website, which is through the, uh, the Apple support, and we've got a link for files and resources, and there is a plea before venue PDF yes. file, which uh, you can download for your iPad. Right. Okay. So yes, that's what I was So we'll cover that in some more detail, but you can add add okay. additional stuff into um, into the device uh, as you as you find it. Okay. Okay. CPS legal guidance is really for the legal advisors. They're also using the application, so we've included this for them to keep them happy on my bench. And a tip for them, if uh, that index isn't is particularly broad, it's particularly it's it's got lots of data in the in the description. If we rotate that to landscape and go back to the index, you can see you've got a lot more data contained in that. So that's a tip for legal advisors using the CPS legal guidance. Yes. Let's cover my documents. So all, all the letters that you get from your justices clerk, you can add in to my documents. So you know, little little snippets that you pick up as you're going along, you can add them into the application here. I'll just show you how to do that. We go to go. I'm just going to hide that for a second. We're going to go into iTunes. Now this is the new iTunes 11. It takes a little bit of getting used to, so it is a little bit different. Click on the iPad that you're connected to. Click on the Apps button, and there's. Can you get through your through your normal iPad? Can you get into iTunes, or does it have to be done on, on your computer? On it, your it has laptop. It has to be done through your computer or laptop, yeah. Right, okay. There's no other way of getting them in to uh, okay. into file sharing. So we, we get into apps and we then scroll down and we find sentencing guidelines. There's that motoring court favorites. I can copy that to my desktop for the next time that I I mean, motor in court. I can also do a save to, you know, I can put it into my documents or something and, and save there. So to add documents, I'm going to click the add button. I'm going to go to my assets for sentence and guidelines, and I'm simply going to select all the files that I'd like to add. Oh, there's an old motoring one that I did some, some other time. So I can open those. Those get copied to the file sharing part of that application. So that's all 20 copied. I'll now go back to my iPad. And I can just do a refresh, that top button, and you can see those all those documents I've uh, added in to my favorites into my document. Okay. Okay. So you so can also make, iTunes, Yeah. Just you can also make these favorites. So I, I I use this one called program from my probation trust, which is a handy list of the programs they actually perform in Warwickshire Trust, Probation Trust. And also what's quite nice is the success rate of those particular courses. Okay. Uh, Okay, I, we just for fun, I I also just jump into the courts, give you a look at Leamington Spa Magistrates Court, and um, just cover history. If you've anything that I've referenced within the application, whether it's been favoured or not, it goes onto the history list. So if I suddenly get a speeding 
case come in from next door from the other court, I can make it favourite and reference it. Right, yes. Okay, now I'd like to just mention here, you can see my toolbar at the top is a bit different to, to yours if it's default. I've configured this to automatically disappear whenever I start to use the PDF and to reappear when I tap on the top or bottom of the screen. So this yes, is part of the, the settings or preferences you can change in the application. I'm just gonna spend a few minutes, first of all, um, finishing off the other tools and utilities, and we'll come back to look at customization in a second. So first button on the bottom left, we've got a finds link. This is just a reprint of an updated guideline finds page from the back of your pronouncements book with the 110 and the 400 relevant weekly income highlighted within that chart. And it's just useful to have because you now understand these are guidelines. Your fine can be between 25% of weekly to 75 for a band A. So it's just helping you understand those those fine bands. Yeah, it's come on. What is it? Okay, and you can see your VF victim surcharge is selected at 10%. And as we've mentioned, victim surcharge, as you go through these, you can see underneath we've got the description of for whom this discharge fee is applicable. So £15 is obviously prior to October the 1st and also That's great. YRO, referral order, conditional discharge, etc. So you can just run through those and you can see for whom they apply to. Okay. Okay, let's do some fines. Um, but these are hypothetical cases, so they may not make judicial sense, but they'll get the point across. £400 is our default uh, relevant weekly income. So if you're doing a motoring court with non-attenders, these are not guilty pleas entered automatically. You'd select 400 you'd select non, not guilty, so there's no discount for an early guilty plea. And if it's a mobile phone, and it's an offence after the 1st of October, it's therefore between 20 and 120 pound, that's the fine for a band A mobile phone. Okay, speeding 44 in a 30 would be a band B, and you can see that's 100% of salary. Band C, no insurance, is 150% or fail to provide. And as we change those fine bands, you can see the graphic at the bottom of the fine calculator changes to reflect that new banding. And that obviously matches up with what you have on your guideline fines, which is that first button. Yeah. Okay, so just to prove all this does work, uh, you can see the VS changes automatically. The yeah. fine changes automatically if you select the 110 for a band A fine, 55 quid plus 20 pound costs. And if we had a weekly salary of 1,521 pound, it'll work it out for you as being for that particular offense. That's a pretty high income for a week. That's therefore a much higher fine. If it was a monthly, it would be a different figure or even an annual salary. So let's put, £34,000 as an annual salary, and it works it all out again for you. Okay, let's just touch on for a second. Remember that these are guidelines, and the, the guideline A band fine is between 25% and 75%. To me, that suggests a, 30, four, a 35 miles an hour in a 30, we could mitigate that fine, whereas 45 in a 30 outside of school would be a band B fine, and we might aggravate that as well. So you can use this slider to adjust that fine. 
Yes. Okay, any increments of 5% here? Yep. Yeah. Okay, so you're, this is keeping you within the guidelines, but allowing you as a bench to apply some judicial um, mitigation or aggravation for that type of offence. Every offence is different. This allows you to reflect that. So a quick double check. This is an offence after the 1st of October. 10% of £720 is £72. It's between 20 and 120 and that's total up for that offence. Oh. We need some costs. We'll have £85 costs. That's £877. Do you have that money on you today? Can you pay? We'll make a collection yes. order and so on. Okay. So that's a single fine. This also supports multiple fines. So if you're dealing with a number of speeding offences on the same day, they would typically be one offence with no separate penalty. If they're on different dates, you could have multiple fines, clicking the add fine for speeding, followed by a mobile phone, followed by a seat belt, would allow you to total three or more fines to provide a menu of fines for one offender. You know these things you're coming out there, you're coming out from the top of your head, followed by a mobile phone, followed by a speed, speeding, you've, you've got them in your head, it isn't anywhere here, is it? Yeah, I'm just I'm just making it up as I go along. Yes, they're they're just right. It's okay. Right. It's just, I thought it might be written somewhere. I can't see it. No, I, 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 it's only because I keep they keep putting me into motoring and I can't escape. So therefore, you you just pick up these things as you go along, don't you? So mobile phones, an A band fine, uh, low uh, low speeding is uh, band A, then it goes to band band B. So. Let's let's cover speeding. Um, by the way, I can just I can hit reset to get it all back to the same. There will be a data update for level five fines, which are still five thousand maximum. They will become unlimited at some point. Let's just touch on speeding. So if you have thirty-five in a thirty, thirty-five miles an hour, band A fine your national guideline. And what we've done is we've spread those points between the band. So your national band says four points to six points. We'd say, well, if we increment those logically, we'll go to four so points. How did you get this? Your national guideline says three points. We give you the national guideline, yes. but we also give you the proportionate spread of points as you go through that speeding band. Yes. Okay, so there you go. We've we've yeah. run through all the way through to the end of our guidelines. Sixty and a thirty double the speed limit is six points of disqualification. And we're sort of saying, well yeah, sixty one that's, that's probably disqualification or six points or whatever would get yeah. get a disqualification. Yeah. To get yeah. back to that little information, just press the big cross and you can see some guidance from the National Citizens Guidelines. Next one along is alcohol. It's in two sections. The top one is drink driving. It's driving with excess alcohol. You'll typically be working with in breath. You'd still have blood and urine, but uh, so 3059, we know it's pan C. Uh, it's band C fine, 12 to 16 months, or 36, 40 months, if it's an offence in the last 10 years, second offence. Okay, yes. And we give you a link here to get back to the actual page for the excess yeah, alcohol. I found it out uh, accidentally just, just a few moments ago. <laughs> okay, good. Okay. So the grid at the bottom is the excess alcohol in charge. So it's excess alcohol with the keys in the back of the car or something. And you've got the guidelines there for those different measurements of alcohol per microgram of breath. And again, a link takes you to the excess alcohol. Um, there, there you go. Okay. So, um, Next one along, disqualification dates. We've recently rationalised this to review, remove any deviation from 
the guidelines, which are, it is 12 months dis disqualification, can earn a three months reduction for completion of the, the course. 13 weeks, sorry, 13 months is 13 weeks, 14 is 14, and so on. So all the way through to 60 months disqualification, will earn a possible 60 weeks reduction on completion of a course by these dates. Now, we, my sort of advice to my chairman, if they take any off me at all, is you don't have to give the actual dates. You could just say you could reduce your disqualification to um, October 2013 if you complete a driver rehabilitation course. You don't have to give the dates. He won't remember them anyway. And besides, it's DVLA who actually decide when the driver can get his license back. So that's just a small point. And we give you a link to the rehabilitation course advice, which takes you to the correct section in the guidelines. And finally, if this was a defendant from a previous hearing, his disqualification would already have been made effective. He would have been given an interim disqualification. Therefore, you should click the date to return that to a previous date of that previous hearing, which then adjusts all the dates for the calculator. OK. Yeah. OK, good. And on to the final calculator, the overweight vehicles. Yes. <clears throat> you have the option here of um, we've got a reduced selection of victim surcharges because some of them are just not appropriate for custody. We, we have essentially two elements to the charge of overweight vehicle. There's firstly the, the total weight of the vehicle. So if the, the overload of the vehicle is uh, 28%, it's over 3.5 tonne, it's a company prosecution, we have the total weight, and then supplementary to that, we have the overloading for each axle. So we can have multiple axles with different overloadings per axle. And that's where you end up with fairly punitive uh, fines for, for those over 3.5 ton company, owner company, and that's how those fines work out. You can simply delete any of these by clicking the cross adjacent to that fine. If you've got your figures wrong, it was a 3.5. You could do total weight, axle, and then a second axle. Yes. So that's. That's nearly finished. We just need to add on to there the um, the costs. So we've got a button here for eighty-five pound costs. So if we do go back to settings, I'm going to close the application again. Close sentencing guidelines. Go into settings. Go into sentence guidelines, and I can adjust these elements of income if the census council does change this to assumed weekly income of 110 or 120 for on benefits or we know that our cps is going to charge a different rate for prosecution all those changes become effective when i then restart the sentencing guidelines application so there you see calculator with new figures for assumed weekly income, a new um, fine for CPS prosecutions, and so on and so forth. So that's how you can customize the calculators for how you work in court. Okay, that's a quick run through the sentencing guidelines for uh, iPad.